Amen, amen. We do thank God, amen, for all that he's doing and all that he's done. Amen. Like the program said, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. He's praise worthy of our praise whether he don't do anything else for us. Amen. 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 But there, there is uh, something I heard before. They said that he brought me too far to leave me. Amen. 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 I think I was just talking to my sister about that. That's what she told me. Amen. 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 So God is good and we thank God for all that he's doing uh, in heaven and here on earth. Amen. 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 Truly, there is a lot going on, but what we don't understand in a lot of places, there's always something going on. Amen. 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 Something more publicized than others and, and then uh, something more devastating than others. But we still trust in the Lord no matter what. Amen. 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 Paul, he, 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 he began, he, he began to explain himself to those that wanted to kill him one time, and it was, it was more or less that if, if to die is, is Christ, and, and, and so if he live, is, he stay here to serve people. If he die, he, he go to be with the Lord. So either way, it didn't make him any difference. And that, that attitude that he has is kind of the same attitude that we should have about God because he'll take care of us here on earth, and he'll take care of us and our next destination, that's with him, right? Amen. amen, amen, amen. So as we ready ourselves to pray, we continue to pray for uh, all those that are involved in the, the war that is going on. And we pray for those that are even on the sidelines of different uh, political governments that have all of our faith kind of in their hands here on earth. But we know that God is still in control. So I don't, I don't want to say things that would make somebody think that God is not in control. God is. Amen. But man has still has the volition. He still has a choice to make the right decision or the incorrect decision. So we thank God for all that he's given us to do. And, and that applies to us in our lives too. We have that particular choice. So as we begin to pray again, we want to pray for all of, all of those people and uh, the loved ones that are scattered all over the, the, the world that are watching. And we want to continue to pray for uh, our friends and family, those that are sick and shut in, and all of those that are continuing to trust in God. Amen? Amen. 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 And also those who, who don't even know him yet in the pardon of their own sins, because Amen. Jesus is there and waiting on them, because there's still room at the cross. There's still room at the cross. There's still room at the cross. Amen. Amen. So if we can ready ourselves to pray, we just thank God that he's given us again this time together to be able to come together, to, to pray together, to intercede for our brothers and sisters, and just to, to pray that God will continue to bring uh, the light of life into each and every one of us, because he's just a, a great and wonderful God, and we thank God for all that he's doing and all that he will do in the lives of his people. He's Amen. just that good. Amen? Amen. Amen. He is just that good. So we thank God again for just allowing us this privilege to be able to pray. Amen. 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 May we bow. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you again for your love, your kindness. We thank you for all that you're doing in the lives of your people. We thank you, Lord, for strengthening us and giving us the power, Lord, to, again, to make uh, great and wise choices in your name. We ask, you, Lord, that you would continue to send your hand of protection upon each and every one of us, continue to bless us and help us as we walk in your way. Help us to continue to always believe in the purpose that you set forward and help us, Lord, to be conformed to the likeness of your son. We thank you, Lord, for opening our eyes to the spiritual side, Lord, that we might be able to see and to know that everything that's happening in the physical, something already has taken place in the spiritual. We thank you, Lord, for lifting our heads. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to walk around with our head down and, 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 and uh, not have any hope. We thank you, Lord, for the hope that you've given us, Lord, because we know that this place is not our home. and Our home is whenever we come to be with you. We thank you, Lord, for just strengthening us and helping us as we continue to move forward. We thank you for, again, the reasonable help. Uh, the portion of health and strength that you've given each and every one of us. 
We ask, Lord, that our mind would be fixed on you, and again, that we would do all that you've called us to do in these last and evil days. We continue to pray for all of those that are on our prayer list. We pray for Donna Harrison, Tyson Center for Family, John Stone, Renee Huntington, Diana Cole, Tiffany Vera, Michael Thomas, Betty DeVilla, Kenyatta Brewer, the Taylor family, Hodge family, the Hooper family, the Mitchell family, the Ritchie family, the Young family, the Ford family, the Gregg family, Pam Payton, Carl Williams Jr., Charlotte Kirby, the Tucker family, Hilda Rayan family, Trinity Bass, Judy Martin, Clarence Earl, Melby Hudson, Tim Sims, Ricky Williams, Vernell, Vernell and Florence Williams, Kim Taylor, Lucinda Taylor Jones, Scotty Taylor, James Taylor, Ella Taylor, Mary Taylor, Tony Taylor, Larry Taylor Jr., Annie Mae Hayes, Mary Jefferson, Kevin Earl, Ann Green, David and Michelle Lacey, Sandra Williams, Carl Williams, Sharon Bates, DeAndrea Thompson, Sanaya Schuyler, Tanya Taylor, Lysandra Campbell, and Pastor Samuel Taylor. We thank you, Lord, for, again, giving us this day and giving us this time together, Lord, that we might be able to worship you, that we might be able to praise you, that we might be able to magnify your holy name. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Truly, God is good, and we just thank God for, again, all that he's doing to make life as such that it is, because God is a great God. He's awesome in all that he does, and there's not anything that is, escapes his his eyes, his watchful eyes. Amen? Amen. 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 We, we have a problem if we don't believe that God is aware of everything that is going on, that he is Amen. able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask. I think that he's able to bring light into the darkness, that he's able to lift us up when we've been uh, brought down. He's able to Give unto us our daily bread and the things that we need for life and life itself. Amen? Amen. 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 So we, as we pick back up in uh, Romans chapter 9, we'll look at verse 25, uh, where we left off. We see that God is still doing a wonderful thing. He's doing things with his people, and we just thank God that he's given us that great opportunity to be able to see and to know his insights mm -hmm. what he has in mind the problem with all of us is that we have a purpose and God has a purpose mm -hmm. and whoever purpose goes forward that becomes our king that becomes the one that rules us mm -hmm. amen. amen 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 so for topic sake we're just going to say they are my people. They are my people. Starting at the 25th verse, uh, as he says also in Hosea, I will call those who were not my people, my people. And here, and, and her who was not beloved, beloved. And it shall be that in the place where it was said to them, you are, my, you are not my sons, you are not my people, there they shall be called sons of the living God. And as Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, though the number of the sons of Israel be as the sand of the sea, it is the remnant that will be saved. For the Lord will ex execute his word upon the earth thoroughly and quickly. And just as Isaiah foretold, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left left to us uh, posterity, we would have become as Sodom and would have re uh, resembled Gomorrah. What shall we say then, that Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness attain righteousness, even the righteousness which is by faith? But Israel, pursuing a law of righteousness, did not arrive at that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith by faith, but as though it were by works. They stumbled over the stumbling stone, just as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and he who believes in him will not be disappointed. Father, we thank you for your word of blessing. We thank you that, you, that you've given it to us today. Give us what to say, give us what to hear, that it all may be good and pleasing in, in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As we 
I had already pre spoke on what was going on here. We have to understand the purpose of God. The purpose of God is that we become like his son. No matter what you're doing, no matter what you're trying to achieve, no matter what your goal is in life, God's goal, God's purpose is that we attain to the likeness of his son. That is his purpose for us. Now everything else comes after that. It's not that he has taken all of our things away. It's just that the, we have to remember what the main purpose is. So again, I say the, the best relationship that a person can have today is with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So as we look into scripture, we get the understanding that Paul was referring to the Gentiles who the Jews considered themselves, or Israel considering themselves as God's people. But Paul is making this statement that all of Israel is not all of God's people. The children of Abraham, they, they, they thought just because they belonged to him, they were descendants of him, that they were the chosen one. Without following by faith, without following uh, uh, the purpose of God, not doing all that they were supposed to do, they thought just because they were related to Abraham, they were God's chosen people. But Paul began to speak again about those who were not loved, or who, those who were not to be loved, became to be loved. Those who, in, in verse 25, uh, those who were not his people became his people. So the real people of God are those who trust in, in faith and have in, in, in Jesus Christ and follow him as they're supposed to. Because God, that's what God has called us to. We want to, uh, again, conform to the likeness of his son. That's what we want to do. That's our purpose. Amen? Amen. 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 So as Paul was referring to uh, uh, in Hosea to actually, uh, the, the, the scripture refers to uh, Israel. Paul was using it as the people now as Gentiles. They're now to fall in the place of where God wants them, his people. Mm -hmm. We have the right now to become his people. When we were a, a far off, now we've been called to come close to God. We have, there is room at the cross for all of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we began to look and we began to think about how not only Israel will be saved, but the Gentiles will be saved too. Because Israel thought, again, that it was all theirs. Y'all know how we get. We think that once we get something, we think it's ours and it's nobody else. Amen. Amen. Uh, your, your kids, some of the time when they live with you, they think it's their house, but actually Amen. it's not. Amen? So they begin to think just because they're associated with somebody, that which is somebody else's is also theirs. And sometimes you have to straighten that out. Amen? Amen? So God had to fix that situation which was with Israel to let them know there are a people that is going to love him. There are other people that are going to uh, uh, be with him. There are other, another people that he's going to He's going to take care of. And as, as he, he continued to talk about these particular things, he said, And it shall be that the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, they, there are, they shall be called sons of the living God. Amen. That same particular place. So God is opening up the door for Gentiles to come in because Israel, is, they're at this place to where they have rejected Christ. So if you ever decide you're going to reject Christ, you might as well count yourself out of everything that God has for you. Amen. The thing about it is that you, you, you can look at TV now and, and, and because it's starting to come on on a reoccurring basis. Ron, Ron Reagan comes on and talk about being an atheist and all this kind of stuff and this, that, and the other. And he, he, he ends it with the point that, that he's not afraid basically to go to hell. So, so he, he ends it with a, with, with, with a bold statement. 
So he, he, he wants to be an atheist and he, he wants everybody else to follow in this same thing because he don't want to be a part of the religious sect that has already been put in place. So as, as he is doing that, he's going to be that. As he's saying that, that this is the place where he's going to go, that's where he's going to go. And he's not afraid because he's not there yet. God was dealing with, with Israel, and Israel rejected Christ. And Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, though the number of the sons of Israel be as the sand of the sea, it is a remnant that will be saved. So he talks about a remnant. That means that, therefore, out of a whole group, only some are going to be picked out. God has a right to do that. And what we don't understand is that we, we call it unfair, we call it unjust, and we call it all of this, but God has the sovereignty to do whatever he will do. Whenever we get that in our, in our heads, we'll be better off with, uh, uh, living our life because God is sovereign. I don't care what we think and what we do to try to make him not that, he's going to be that. Amen? He, he, he's going to be that. That's just who he is. And we don't have the power to change that situation. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so he talks about this remnant, those that are going to believe in Christ, even though they are Israel. Now they're going to be blended with those Gentiles who also believe in Christ, who have accepted Christ on the basis of what God has given them. Amen. And as they do this, they will be a part of God's people. He says, for the Lord will execute his word upon the earth thoroughly and quickly. And just as I said foretold, except the Lord of Savior left to uh, us a poster posterity, we would have become as Sodom and would have resembled Gomorrah. We look at, at, at this particular verse and we begin to think about how God has the opportunity to do what he wants to do. As those lands were so evil and they were so bad, they, God, for lack of words, he executed them. Fire and brimstone came down on them because of the land was so wicked and because they had turned themselves away from God. And, and now he, he's given us this example of that that's where Israel could have been, but God chose them not to be in this situation. He, he said, except for God, they would, they could or would have been like that. But it is God who has saved this remnant, who has put his people out in front so that they have the opportunity yet to be saved. Amen. There are those that will believe and there are those that will not believe. Amen. But God is still giving the opportunity for all of them to be saved. Right. So we're following this and we're seeing that even though the Gentiles didn't have the law, didn't have the, 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 uh, the precepts and everything that Israel had, they still began to follow God by faith. They, they began to believe in something that they didn't know. They didn't know all about what was going on. And, but Israel had the, they had the books, they had the word, they had everything and, and set up to be able to follow God in a particular way. Well, there was not a set way, basically, for the Gentiles to do it. But yet, they found a way to God anyway. And as they did this, it opened up something for them to be able to come in and become God's people also. By faith. By trusting in something they did not see. For all of us people who have to see everything to believe it, Sometimes. For all of us, it's not faith if we see it. I'm believing God for $100 when I got $100 in my pocket. That's not faith. If I'm believing it for a different $100, maybe. But if you got what you all, if you can see what you're already looking for, it's not faith. That's right. Yeah. The Gentiles began to trust in God by faith, not by the law, because they didn't have the law. It wasn't precepts and, 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 and uh, laws that were set up that they followed. 
It was God who was working in them because he chose to. Because he chose to. This is what he chose to. He picked out the people that he wanted. He decided that these people were going to be saved. Because something else that we don't know always and understand about God is that even though God is right here, right now, he's also ahead of us in the next minute. The next second. It's like, what you going to eat after church? I don't know. Well, God already knows what you're going to eat. How about that? You don't know yet because you hadn't decided. You don't know what you have a taste for yet. But you're going to eat something. You don't know yet. Amen? Because we're still in the, are we in the 11 o'clock hour. We won't eat till a little bit later. When that time comes, we will know, but God has already known. None of that stuff sneaks up on him. Because he's all knowing, he's all he's all seeing. He he knows everything that's gonna happen to you before it happens. Again, that's how he could harden Pharaoh's heart. Because he knew that Pharaoh would never come to saving faith. He knew that Pharaoh's heart was going to always be hard. So he, uh, he just made his heart harder. Be because he, he already knows these things. And what we don't trust in is that God already knows. God already knows what you need. He says it in Matthew, the sixth chapter. Amen? He already knows what you need. Sometimes you don't understand what you need. First of all, we, he knows that we need him. He knows that Israel needs him. He knew and knows that Gentiles need him. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just us who don't know it. Y'all ever seen somebody walking around here to just act like they lost? <laughs> or something going on wrong with them and they, they just kind of act it up? Yeah. And you say, he need Jesus. Or she need Jesus. And what we're actually saying is, yeah, that's what they need. Because if they had Jesus, they would move and function in their right mind. They wouldn't be moving in the foolishness or the, the mindset that they're actually in that is away from God. They'll start moving in the right mind, the correct mind. Amen. 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 So, so, so the, the, the Gentiles began to move in a way that was correct minded. That caused them to be called by God. Because this, this is what God wanted from them. This is what he actually wanted to happen. Amen? Amen. So the, the people of Israel who tried so hard to get right with God. Y'all ever tried? Say, Lord, I know I messed up this time, but next time I'm going to get it. I ain't going to mess it up next time. Amen. And no matter how hard you try in your own strength, you still mess it up. Paul even speaks of us moving with, with the Holy Spirit. When, we, when, we, when the Holy Spirit actually enjoys us and we move forward with, in, the, in the will and the way of God because the Holy Spirit will lead us in that way, we can get it right. But, but when, when we start trying to keep the law in our own strength and our own power, we can never succeed. And that's what Israel was about. They were trying to keep the law in their own power and their own strength. Without God. They were doing it basically on their own. It, it, it says basically they were, they were pursuing a law of righteousness. But they weren't re really reaching out for mm -hmm. righteousness. Mm -hmm. They were pursuing the law itself. Not necessarily the righteousness that they needed to be saved. So... What well, we have to understand again about uh, uh, humans, when they're, when they're on their own and when they're moving in their own power, they cannot fulfill the right demands of the law. How many of us just, just said we're never going to do it again? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm just not going to walk like that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to run with those that do. 
but we find ourselves doing the exact thing that we said we wasn't going to do because we're doing it in our own strength. And, and again, that's, that's what Israel, that, that's what they were doing. They were doing it in their own strength without moving in what God, or moving in the way that God wanted them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to do. Amen. So Paul explained it before, and he said that the law was never meant to save us. We were never meant to be saved by the law. That was not God's plan. God's plan was us, for us to be saved by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. not by the law. Mm -hmm. So instead of pursuing that relationship, we actually pursue the law, which cannot save us. But Jesus Christ can. So therefore, Israel has to pursue the right thing in order to be in right favor with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so as, as they stumbled, as they moved around and, and trying to su succeed into something that will not get to the result that they actually want, they couldn't quite get it. Because they kept moving forward in, to the law and not basically what God wanted them to do. Uh, Notice that they, t they talk about a, a stumbling stone that was put in the way. It says uh, that, that uh, they stumbled over a, a great rock. They stumbled over something that had been put in their path. Uh, and, and, and what we're talking about here is Christ. Christ was the stone that made them stumble. Mm -hmm. Christ was not what they intended. It was not what they foresaw God doing. Because they thought they could continue to do what they had to do by the law and get to the result that God wanted them to get to. But that's not what God, again, intended. God, in, in Scripture, he warned them of, of, of this, and he said, as it is written, he says, I am placing a stone in Jerusalem that makes people stumble, a rock that makes them fall, but anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Uh, we, we looked at this, this combination and we see how Christ was there for the Gentiles to help them get saved, but it actually became the stumbling block for Israel. Because again, if you read through your gospel, if you read through uh, everything that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John actually talk about, and then even move over to uh, Acts, we see something going on that was like nothing else before. Even though it had been written about in scripture, the Jews were missing, or the Israel was missing what was actually happening. Because they had their own agenda. Mm -hmm. They had their own preconception of what God was like. Mm -hmm. Oh, God would never accept those Gentiles. He would never accept people like that. Look at them, they're over there beating on rocks. He'll never accept those type of people. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're not even dignified. They're, they don't even have uh, class. Look, look what they're wearing. They're wearing Walmart. They're not wearing Prada. How can God save them if they're not wearing Prada or Gucci? They're, look, what they're, look what they're driving. How can God save those kind of people that's driving hoopties? Look where they live. Look how they live. How in the world will God save those type of people? If y'all will look into scripture, y'all see that prejudice has been in the Bible for a long time. It, it already, it, I mean, this, this, this problem that we still have today, it's been there a long time. It, 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 it just didn't come up 400 years ago, 2,000 years ago. It, it didn't just come up then. It's been like that a long time. Amen? Amen? Amen. So now we have this stone that has caused Israel to stumble, but that has given life to the Gentiles. Man. That has given an opportunity. And when I speak of Gentiles, I'm speaking of us. <laughs> Given us to become chosen people, sons of the living God. Even though we have this, 
we still have to be able to trust and believe. And just because we're Gentile, just because we didn't have the law, we, we still are not going to move without excuse. It's still going to be what we're doing with Jesus. It, it's still going to be how Jesus is relating in our lives today. It, it's going to still deal with how you wake up in the morning, how you go to sleep at night, and what you do in between. Because most of the time we find ourselves trusting in other things instead of trusting in God. We find ourselves in situations that, that are hopeless because we're not trusting in God. We find ourselves just wandering, just lost, because we're not trusting in God. We're not walking by faith. And we talk about that as Christians, right? We say we walk by faith, not by sight. Follow your life. Look, look at what you're doing every day. You're following everything that you see. You're following what you see. But the more spiritual you get, the less you will see in the physical. You'll understand that everything you're watching in the physical happen, that there's something spiritual behind it. Again, before I close, I'm going to talk about Job a minute. Because Job, Job didn't know what Satan and God had been talking about. He, he didn't understand the, 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 the situation that, that God had already talk to Satan about have you considered my servant Job Amen. and Satan saying Job only loved you for the goodies if you stop giving him stuff if you stop protecting him he ain't gonna love you like that yeah. now somewhere in, in, in chapter 40 and 42 Job uh, a little bit before then, I think it was Job. Job really, he got upset. He started challenging God. He started asking God questions and stuff. And, and God more or less asked him, who are you? Where were you when I did this? Where were you when I, when I placed the stars? Where were, were you when I laid uh, uh, the land? Where were you when the, uh, the waters were here? And, and Job had to apologize basically to God. He said, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Because he wasn't understanding the sovereignty of God. Amen. Let me move away from Job, and, and I, I, can't, I can't think of where it is right now, but there was a blind man in the Bible, amen? This blind man had been blind all his life. And Jesus came by one day and healed this blind man. And what the Bible explained is that this man had been blind so that Jesus could come by on the day that he came by to give him sight. Seems cruel and seems unjust, seems unfair, right? For this man to be uh, uh, blind for 38 years, basically. And one day Jesus come by and give him sight. Man. Well, we don't understand. We, we lose ourselves in the sovereignty of God. Mm -hmm. Whatever God wills, he wills. Jesus in the garden. Jesus basically saying that if there is a different cup, if there is a different way that this thing can be done, Let's do it that way. Amen. But if it's not, no. your will be done, mm -hmm. not mine. Amen. Because he understood the sovereignty of God. Mm -hmm. He understood that God had already set a way for it to happen, and this is the way it was, for the it was supposed to happen. And that's what needed to happen. So when we get this, this, this principle in our life and we see the sovereignty of God, we can move uh, 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 further on in our life and what God wants us to do. When we begin to prioritize God and we begin to understand that it's not the things that we actually do because Jesus died for all of our sin, past, present, and future. So it's not basically the things that, that we do. It's how we trust. It's, it's how we walk. Because if you think about it, in the Bible, if the Bible says that we should love one another, uh -huh. and if you're walking by faith, you're not going to murder anybody that you love. Amen. You're not going to curse anybody that you love. You're not going to steal from anybody that you love. If the principle is put into place. So we got to understand Again, that this is all about God and not about us. It's all about Jesus. It's not about us. Right. It's not about, it's never really been about us. 
When we put too much focus on ourselves, we're taking out the principle of what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. Guilty. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do it too. Because there's, all, there's a human side of us, and we don't want to fall on that human side and, and, and make it a, an, an excuse. But it is. Sometimes situations, trials, tribulations affect us. So why do you cry when you get sad? Why do you cry when you get when when you're happy? Why why do these different things, why do these different emotions come up? Why do you get angry when someone does something to you? Because these emotions come up when the when the situations and trials and tribulations, different things cause them to happen. We have these emotions and we can't ignore them. But we don't want them to rule us. Amen. We have to rule them. We have to. Amen. So what well, we as people today, as Christians, we don't want Jesus to be our stumbling stone. We want him to be our salvation. Amen. Amen. We want him to be our truth, our way, our life. Amen. Not the stumbling stone. Amen? Amen. 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 So, so Paul is giving us this new way of looking at things. Israel necessarily did want to see that new way. They still wanted to see the, the old way. They wanted to still follow the things that they had been following for thousands of years. Yeah. Instead of seeing it God's way. Amen. The different understanding. Y'all understand when y'all see a person, y'all call them old school? Right? Old school. So that they, when you say that, you're saying what? That dude, he's kind of, he lived during a different time than what I'm, I'm living. So they might used to do things different. I did, I did the same thing with my daddy. When my daddy liked a low cut and I liked an afro. Because the afro was the thing of the time. Now people put every color of hair in their head and I'm looking and I'm thinking, what? Because I, I, don't, I don't see it, you know? Because you look, I'm thinking, when these people get my age and they look back and they have this color hair, then I get to think, oh, people my age are doing it. But it's just the difference of how times change. Yeah, I'm still old school. I'll die that way, probably. Old school. But just because I'm old school doesn't mean that I can't believe and trust in Jesus. Amen. That I can't follow him in this new life of uh, 2022 instead of 1970, 1980. I have to now live the life that he's given me here in 2022 and still trust him like I did in 1990. Like I did in the 2000s. Still believe and, and, and walk by faith, even though uh, parts of my body and different things may be failing, I still have to believe and trust in him. I still have to walk by faith. Amen. That's not going to change. That's not going to change. After Job got through apologizing uh, 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 to, to God and everything, he understood better then. Mm -hmm. That None of that was really ever about him or in his hand. It was something that he had to just take and deal with. Because God is sovereign. I, I know some of y'all probably wonder, well, why didn't they make me, why didn't they make my last name uh, Gates or, or Cuban or whatever? Why, why wasn't I born into the family with a silver spoon and this, that, or the other? I don't know. I can't answer that. All I can do, all, all I can do is, is, is move forward and, and understand whatever God has put in, in front of me here in Scripture. I, I do know that there was a remnant set aside that God uh, 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 was dealing with Israel with, and that there was a, a, another set of people that he that was not loved that he began to love. I understood. I understand that. I understand that I was one of those people. But now, 
I'm, I'm one of those people that God loves. One of those people that God uh, calls son of the living God because of how God moved, how he purposed, and not my own will and purpose, and not the own will and purpose of Israel. Of the, of Israel. We have to understand, just because people are going in a direction and there's a lot of people going their way, doesn't mean they're right. Doesn't mean they're going the right way. Doesn't mean they're following the right path. It just means that all of them are going that way. But when you know the way, that's the way you're supposed to go. Amen. It's something about being a follower and a leader. Some people are followers and some of them are leaders. Make sure if you are, you are, you are a follower that you're following the right people. Make sure if you're a leader, Amen. you're leading the people correctly. Because the best place to lead anybody is Christ. Amen? Amen. That's, and that's what we want to understand. So I pray that each and every one of you will be uh, blessed and God, that God will continue to open up uh, the, the window of blessing that you might be able to see and to understand that he's sovereign and he's moving in his own way and his own purpose. And we have to actually line up with what God is doing. Amen? Amen. 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 A lot of us here, we, we don't want to die. But we don't understand, too. The only way that we're actually going to get to the other side is Except the rapture comes. None of us want to do it because we're attached to this dirt. And we do a lot of things to keep from doing it. We take our vitamins, we go to the doctor, we get our checkups, we do this and we do that. Because we're still trying to stay here. But when we give up on those kind of things, life becomes different for us. And we begin to follow a different path. But I pray that you will continue to understand the right or the correct path that God wants you to follow in your life. Amen? Amen. 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 Israel was led one way. Gentile left, was led one way, but they all meet up at the cross. Amen. They all meet up at the same place. Amen. They all meet up at Jesus Christ. Amen. That's where we that's where we meet up at. No matter what direction we came from, that's where we meet. Amen? Amen. May God bless you and keep you, and we pray that God will continue to uh, help us to be able to be here next week. Amen. Amen. If you would like to give to our ministry, there is a link on our page. Again, God bless you, and we thank God for you. Amen. Amen.